Hello, my name is Least Cost Router 7. I'm a third generation Least Cost Routing Engine. My job is to help. Here today gone tomorrow. VOIP carriers find holes in domestic wholesale routing decks. I use this knowledge to exploit the weakness of that carrier's mistake to make a whole bunch of money. The people I work for are not bad people, but I would not invite them to go to church with me either. If you are a retail sales representative that can still sell me a PRI from a large telecom carrier, I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm here to tell you a little about the history of least cost routing. The funny thing about least cost routing is that it began with routing all traffic to Iowa. In the early 90s, only to have everyone running away from routing any traffic to Iowa. Now, least cost routing has always been about avoiding paying the going rate for telecom services to any given area. In the 1990s least cost routing was about building out direct and office trunking to the seven regional bell operating companies and routing independent traffic to either Iowa or Canada. Then in about 1996 this all changed with little thing called Telecommunications Act of 1996. With new Telecom Act came all of these companies called CLX and they began to pop up all over the country. For about four years CLX made a bunch of money with dial-up internet traffic. That was back when it took one to two minutes for a picture of porn to download and show up on your computer. C. Lex made dot zero zero two cents or more for each minute that your modem spent talking to a CLX remote access server. Those were the days when long-distance companies made five to ten cents per minute. CLX made money selling modem time. In the late 1990s everyone in telecom had the potential to be a millionaire. Then we all decided that we needed broadband to look at porn faster. Let's face it, porn along with the government have destroyed to the telecom industry. If it were not for broadband all those CLX would not have had all those dial-up ports that they needed to pay for. This is the second evolution of least cost routing. Because CLX had all those ports to pay for, and a few telecom cowboys or telecom pirates came up with the idea to buy those dial-up ports up and reversing the direction to terminate traffic. Now the FCC will have you believe that VOIP made this happen, but that is complete bull. Poopy. Those telecom cowboys did nothing more than terminate long-distance minutes over local trunk groups. The worst part was that, because they bought crappy equipment, the quality of voice calls suffered. So in about 2000 the cost of a long distance minute went from 4 or 5 cents per minute to 1 cent, and then to 1 half a cent per minute. Why did this happen? Greed. This is about nothing more than greed. Then only good thing about least cost routing in 2002 to 2005 is that the cost of minutes decreased enough to cover up the fact that everyone spent too much money on facilities in the late 1990s. It is sad to think that a gallon of gas cost 75 cents in 2000, and now that gallon of gas costs $2.75. A Coca-Cola costed 50 cents, and I do not mean the overrated wrapper but two quarters, now that same Coca-Cola costs $1.50. Think how much a car cost then versus now. Think how much a house cost then versus now. The only thing that costs less is a minute of long distance. In 2000 a minute of long distance costed 5 cents per minute. Least cost routing has cost more than million people their jobs. Now long distance is included in the cost of your local service. You realize that you pay more for 911 service or for local number portability on your telephone bill than you do for long distance. Guess what there are? 100 times more long distances minutes today than there were in 2000. I guess you really can lose money on each long distance call and then make it up in volume. Now we are four or five years into this thing called SIP. What a piece of crap this is. This is the third generation of least cost routing and really now it is more about just accepting the fact that half of your calls are going to suck who in their right mind would have developed a coding language to transport telephone calls in English. 
You realize 90% of the people who write code for telecom platforms speak English as a second language. Now you know why your faxes don't work. So now here we are in 2010 with the worst quality of telephone calls we have ever had. With software that cannot talk to itself all supported by Dai who write freeware to run on machines that are no more reliable than your home PC. Oh well I guess you can always look at porn on your smartphone while updating your Facebook status. Cheers for now maybe next time I will tell you about local number portability.